Okay, so you can see our total unemployment, you know, populations now account 20% right, of the whole labor force, right? It's such a high unemployment, you know, populations. That's why, you know, we have our concern, right? Economic will slow down, right? So you can see in the past weeks, right? There were uh, many people claim unemployment insurance, right? So all this, you know, is accumulated to the total 26.5 million people, right? Lost the job or unemployed, right? In this situation. And uh, you can see uh, for this week, right, we see many news, right? happened, right, especially in the financial market, right? The first big news is the crude oil, right, crude oil, right? The price is very low now, right? It's even cheaper, right, than the wood, than the water, right? And uh, you can see that's the crude oil price, right, for this week, right? On the Monday, right, the crude oil price is almost touch wood. Touch is zero, right? So it means you can pay like one cent for one barrel of wood, crude oil, right? So uh, on the 2 p.m. Right, on the Monday, right, the price is still like $4 per barrel, right? But at the end of the Monday, right, the price is almost touch wood, the bottom, right? About one cent of one barrel of the oil, right? And also for the uh, oil future, but the price even would even negative, right? Even negative. And right? so people willing to pay right, the money to asking the seller to shipping the oil away, right? Because they don't have enough what tanker right, to store this oil, right? In the US, you know, our country, our are uh, hot, right? Are uh, hot, right? For example, New York are uh, in hot. Right, so all the business right now are halted, right? So no more expansion, right? No more consumption of the oil, right? And also the manufacturing by right, using oil a lot, right? Also halt, right? So you can imagine right, what happened for the whole country, right? So you can see if we don't use the oil, right? But you know, this country as a producer of the crude oil, like the Russia and Saudi Arabia, right? They are still producing oil as their regular agenda, right? Because they cannot stop the producing overnight, right? So this country is still producing uh, more and more oil, right? But, you know, the country like the US and the China, right? The economy is slowed down, right? They don't spend, you know, too much money on the oil anymore. Right, so there are oversupply of the oil and no more tanker to store this oil. Right, so you can see that's why, you know, the previous buyer of the oil not even willing to pay the money to asking the seller to shipping the oil away. Right, they don't, they don't have the storage anymore. I can see here, right, the shortage of the storage of the crude oil intensified. Right for this past month, right? This caused the future price even to be negative, right? Because the storage cost, storage cost, right? Storage and the shipping cost of the crude oil, even more than the oil price itself. So that's the future, that's why the future price is what? Negative, right? It's the, you know, this is the first time Right, the future price even be negative, right? In a real market, right? In a history, it never happened, right? Most future contracts are positive and never below a zero, right? This is the first time historical record, right? The price is below the zero, right? You can see here, right? That's the, you know, the oil ETF, right? For the past few years, right? Starts from the $100 right, about 2015, right, now it's only, what, $1, right, per share, right, for the oil ETF, right, because some students ask me, right, in, in the other class, right, they ask me, now the oil price is very cheap, how can we, you know, make some investment, right, to buy the oil in the long term, 
So I suggest you can buy what? Buy an oil ETF, right? There's no oil stock, right? Stock is for the company, right? So which one can, you know, mirror the price of the oil, the crude oil, right? You can buy something called, called ETF, right? Exchange traded fund, right? So this will, you know, mirror the price of what? The price of the oil, right? So you can buy the ETF, and once the oil price moving up, right? This you this ETF price, right? Will continue what? Continue goes up with oil price, right? So, if you already join the class, please don't leave and enter again, right? Because if you enter, right, it will stop the class, and I need to go back to admit you, uh, into the classroom, right? So once you join, please don't leave and then rejoin, right? And you can see all your ETF price right now is very, very cheap, right? It's $1.35 per share, right? And then if you think all your price will recover right, in the long term, maybe now is your time to buy some what? Buy some all your ETF. Um, okay, so yeah, so if you have any problem with the audio and right, all screen, you can leave and rejoin, but right? if you don't have any, you know, easy with the Zoom, you can stay here, right? Okay, so let's follow uh, all your ETF, right? So if you think the oil price will recover eventually, right? Maybe now it's your time to buy some oil ETF right, for the long-term investment, right? So if the oil recover, for example, to the 2015th level, right? And you can ex expect it, you know, this $1 per share ETF, right? will increase by more than 100 times, right? If our economy is continue expanding, right? In the next few years, right? And also if the price are too low, right? The ETF cannot, not even trading on the market, right? So they do some what? They do some reverse split, right? This uh, week, right? To convert 25 shares, right? Into one share. So that's why you see the price now, right? It's, it's more than what? more than $20, right? And today, if you look at the market, right, the oil ETF increased by more than 10%, right, over, you know, a day, right? So if you bought the oil ETF, right, on Tuesday or Wednesday, today you got 10% return, right? And uh, in my class on the Monday, right, I recommend my right, student to buy the oil ETF, right, for the short term, right? Because the people are panic with the oil price, right, to be even lower. Right, but you know, people try to oversert the oil ETF, right, can trigger the price too low. Right, so you can see, you know, after people oversert, if you can buy on the bottom, right, you can get some, you know, profit, right, very, very, very soon, right. For example, today, right, you can see the oil ETF is already increased by what, 10%, right. And also, you, you know, I, I know we studied the stock market, right, and the online, but we never mentioned the stock, right, in the real market a lot, right, so, uh, you know, be, at the beginning of these semesters, right, in my investment and the global finance class, right, during the February, right, I told my students, right, that would be maybe a panic of what, the coronavirus, right, in the uh, USA, right, in the March, so I, told them to buy some what? Coronavirus vaccine companies, right? These companies are developing vaccine. And so if the panic right, becomes more severe right, in the US, right, people of course will buy the company producing the vaccine, right? So I recommend them to buy the Swiss, you know, stock as a possible choice, right? And the one student asked his dad, right, to buy this company, right? Once the, uh, Moderna. Right? Moderna is a company, you know, producing a vaccine for the um, coronavirus, right, since uh, February. Right? And uh, you can see now they already on a trail of the vaccine on the human, right? So you can see the price, right, is almost doubled, right? And for me, my personal choice is Innovia, right? So today price is about $13 per share, right? So you can see the vaccine company, Right, doing the past months perform 
uh, good, right? Because uh, you know this special pandemic, right? And also there's also a uh, European companies uh, also producing a uh, uh, vaccine for the uh, in uh, for the uh, coronavirus, but it's the Novavax, right? And then they also um, do the scientific research on the vaccine, right? So you can see the price, right? Also, also almost doubled, right? In the past months, right? So if we concern about the risk of the pandemic, right, will be continue, right, in the following months in this year, right? So you can hold this um, vaccine company stock, right, in the hand, right? But now the price is already expensive, right? So if you want to buy it, right, so maybe you need to consider the potential risk, right? Because the price now is already high, right? So, but you know, for the next six months, right, all these vaccines will be not on the market yet, right? It's still in the trial, right? Until FDA approve this vaccine, they will be on the market, right? So there can be, you know, the back to Asian, right? For the next six months, right? if you're holding this vaccine, just be careful, right? If you buy this one on the February or beginning of the March, right? The price are, are still low, right? But for now, the price is already high, right? So if you want to buy it, right? Maybe you need to be um, concerned about some potential risk, right? And also, uh, in our class, right, I mentioned before, right, there's a potential, you know, cure, right, for the um, COVID-19, right, coronavirus, right, is for the remdesivir, right? So this is an injection, an injection, and this injection actually cured right, many patients with the COVID-19. Uh, with a critical situation, right? And then they can inject it with this um, remdesivir, right? More than 90% of the patients in the Chicago right, get cured after one week, right? After they injected with the remdesivir, right? And uh, this remdesivir is, is produced by the Gilead company, right? So that's why I mentioned this one in class, right? On the February class, I mentioned this one. Right, so start from the February, I'm holding this company stock, right? But the stock price not increased too much, right? Because this injection is free, right? It's still in a, you know, third trial on the, you know, from FDA, right? So it's not in the market, right? So all these injections are right, given to the uh, New York hospital and the other hospital in the New Jersey are totally free, right? So this medicine cannot produce any profit for this company. Right? But this, these injections right, is good for the human being, right? especially during this special pandemic. That's why the investors, you know, are confident are still buying the stock of the Chile. Right? So the stock price is increased from the 65 to the 80. Right? Not too bad right? compared with the whole market. Right? It's very tumbled. Right? The GD is still a good investment. Right? And then if you want to do the long term investment, right, so here's my choice. Right? You can think about it. Right? We mentioned the Boeing last time. Right? And also, I mentioned the Zoom right, in my class right, before. Right? And uh, you know, the Zooms are used as the platform to do the online teaching and also the office work right, for most company and school. Right? So I think the Zoom is a good choice. Right, especially during this special situation, right? Most people adopt to working from home, right? So if you want to do a video conference, right? Of course, the Zoom is the first choice, right? So last month, there are some concern about the, you know, security of the privacy on the Zoom, right? So that's why the Zoom price are uh, five to eight, right? But after the CEO, right, CEO Yuan, right? Yuan's, uh, you know, uh, Chinese American, right? So he's the founder of the Zoom, right? He clarified right, the concern of the security about the Zoom, right? and he said right, he now hiring more engineer right, to do the you know some security you know protections on on the Zoom. Right? So the price I think the Zoom for um, recovering right, will still goes up. Right? Today the price of the Zoom is increased by um, ten percent. Right? And of course the Tesla, Walmart, right, Amazon, and the New York Mortgage. Right? are all good choice right, for long term, especially for the Walmart, right? I'm a big fan of the Walmart stock, right? Because I think the Walmart is the number one choice, right? For most area, I right, to buy the grocery. You know, if you have been to like, the other state, 
but not in the New York. Like not too many, you know, available grocery store around. Right, like the you know, like the uh Virginia and Ohio. Right, at this state, right, most likely, right, people will buy what buy grocery in what in the Walmart. Right, so Walmart, of course, is the fundamental need. Right, for grocery for most area, especially in a uh, rural area, right, people cannot have too many uh, supermarkets. Right? And also during this pandemic, right, most people go online shopping. Right? The Walmart providing online shopping for the grocery and right? the fresh goods right? for most area. Right? So that's why I think Walmart is a long-term you know, investment. Okay? And also Amazon, right? Tesla, right? Tesla, you know, last month almost touched 380, right? So I buy some Tesla on, uh, with the price and 450, right? So you can think about Tesla, right? The Tesla demand is very robust, right? So even their factory are closed, right? But there are still many, you know, clients demand Tesla right, in a foreign country, right? Especially in uh, China, right? So China and India has the air pollution problems, right? So government encourage every household right, to buy the electronic car, right? So you can get a plate directly if you bought a electronic car. So that's why electronic car is very popular right, in a foreign country. So even you know the whole industry and right, the whole economy is is slowed down, right? But for demand of the Tesla will be still robust right, for this quarter and next quarter. So I think the Tesla can also be a good holding right, for long term. Right? Also, New York mortgage. Right? Since our you know, state governor, right, Kumar, right, and uh, when he announced right, New York data are what are controlled, right, and uh, more patients are healed, right? even the comfort, right, the comfort, right? The you know the medical ship right already you know left right because we have enough you know ICU units right for the patients right so the New York mortgage right now is on the recovering right recovering right so since the last month right New York mortgage right the price starts from the three dollars per share right now it's almost sixteen sixteen dollars per share right so. It's recovered, right? And I think it will restore to the previous level, right? But for my best choice, right? I think the Walmart and Boeing, right? And uh, you know, long-term investment if you want to do, right? Okay, now let's to review, right? For you know, our second midterm, right? Our second midterms, right? Including the chapter after first test, right? After first test, we study different chapters, right? Some class are hold on campus, right? For example, for the bond a chapter, we study on campus right, in a classroom, right? and we also study the stock, right? But the bond, we study in class, right? We study the yield to maturity, right? And also the coupon. Right, the face value, right, one thousand dollars, right, for all the bond, right, in these matters, right. Then we use these, you know, numbers. We can solve what we can solve the present values of the bond, right. And the yield to maturities are discount rate, right, it's I Y, right. The coupon rate times the face value is the payment, right, it's the coupon payment. Right, the face value is the future value. Right, it's one thousand dollars you will get paid on maturity, and we also have how many years right, to mature for this bond. Right, so we have these four are given. Right, then we can solve the price of the bond. Right, using your financial calculators. Right, so that's our bond calculations we have done in class before. Right, you can refer to our homework. Right, to review this part. Right. If you want to review the homework, first you will locate your homework right on the backboard, right? And you double click your um homework and you can see your score, right? And you click your score, you can see your what you can see your attempt, 
and also you can see your answers and uh, solutions right so for the bond chapters right there are not too many you know problems right but you can see we follow this standardized you know calculations right? based on the inputs and outputs right? we can solve the price of the bond right and also be careful the bond right can pay the coupon semi-annually right? if you receive the bond coupon semi-annually you want to adjust right the yield to maturity right coupon and also number of the period right should be both what adjusted right the yield to maturities should be what should be half right should be the semi-annuals discount rate right divided by two the payment of the coupon is only for the semi annual so also divided by two right and for the number of the period now should be what doubled and right? doubled because we have the what two payments right twice a year right so the total payments should be doubled right once you adjust it right this input right, you can see the price values for the semi-annual coupon payment questions right, you should do this adjustment right and then for the stock valuations right for the stock valuations if a stock price uh, stock price right we use our you know formula right the formulas we're using for a stock price we use the what dividend growth model right that's the p0 equal to the d1 over r minus g right d1 is the d0 times 1 plus g right over r minus g right so the d0 is the dividend just paid all paid right last year and the d0 times 1 plus G is the growth rate of dividend, right? It's dividend in the next year, right? In the next year. So next year's dividend over required rate of return for the stock minus growth rate of stock, right? We have the price of the stock now, right? And for the dividend growth model, right? There are some requirements you want to meet, right? Then you can apply this formula, right? So pay, pay attention to the questions right so if you don't see any conditions right you cannot apply this formula easily right you must satisfy these requirements before you apply this formula first one right the dividend right should be what should be grow with constant rate right that's the rate what G, right so dividend is growing and growing with the same rate for every year right in the coming years right then you apply you can apply this formula second requirement of return of the stock must be more than the growth rate right? if not right the price can be negative right? so it's not meaningful anymore right and also these two cannot be close right? if you have the closed two numbers right then you have the very small decimal Right, in the bottom right so if you take inverse the price will be a huge number right so it's not meaningful also right so required of return must be much more than the growth rate you can apply this formula right but most importantly this condition is most important right dividend is growing right growing with the constant rate g right so that's the requirement before you can apply this formula right dividend growth model so when you solve the questions in the midterm right and then you see these conditions right for example you see the question mention mention what mention the growth rate of dividend right and also mention the dividend just paid for example right you can plug these numbers right into this formula to solve the price of the stock right and also be careful right the dividends are just paid or will be paid if the dividends will be paid in the next year right then you should use what you should use this one right d1 over r minus g right if you say the dividend are uh, paid last year or just paid right then you should use what this one right so you can see the difference right one is the d0 times one plus g one is the d1 right one is d1 
Okay, so let's follow what? Let's follow stock valuations, but also you can see some questions maybe ask you about what? Some concept, right? Is the dividend growing right? or dividend, you know, keep constant, right? So dividends is not keep constant, right? Dividends is growing, right? But the rate, the growth rate are what? Constant, right? Be careful, right? So let's follow stock chapters, right? For stock chapters, right? We also mentioned some investment choice, right? Today, and also you can see we can do some trading, right? On the stock market, right? All this market we call it called secondary market, right? So compare with secondary market, we have what? We have the primary market, right? You should know this concept, right? When you do this test, right? What is the primary market? So primary market means the original market are new shares of the stock are first third to the public. And so the primary market means the new shares right, of the corporations, right? Of you know, firstly, right, third to to the public, right? For example, right, if the JP Morgan right issue new shares, right, and these shares are directly served from the company to the public, right? This is called what? Primary market, right? So primary market is usually forward for the initial public what offering, right? Initial public offering. Right. So for example, right, most you know firm go to trading on the New York New York. Stock change, right? They will offer what? If IPO, right? IPO, you can buy directly from the what? From the company, right? With some low price, right? You can get, right? And who will take responsibility to sell these shares? Will be the what? Will be underwriters, right? Underwriters are what? Are investment bank, right? For example. Right, Morgan Stanley, right, Mary Lynch, right, Credit Space, right, are all underwriters of what? IPO, right? So they sign a contract with what? With the corporation, for example, with the um, Tesla, right? So Tesla is the issuer of the stock, right? Issuer of the stock, right? It's the issuer of the new stocks, right? And the underwriters is the investment bank as an agent. Uh, so they sign a contract and this agent will help the tester to sell the stock to what? To the public, right? To, to the public investors, right? And this agent will charge commission right, if they're doing that, right? So that's for the primary market. Every shares are what? Are new. However, for a secondary market, right? The shares not new, right? Means you can buy the stock from the other investors, right? So in the secondary market, as no new shares are issued, the shares just what? Just change the hands, right? Just change the hand, right? From the one investors to the other investors, right? So that's the difference, right? That's the difference, right? So once the IPO passed, right? All the shares becomes uh, shares on the secondary market, right? And you can buy directly from the other investors use the buy and the sell right, orders right, on the market, right? By the way, there are different orders you can do if you want to do the trading of the stock, right? For example, if you want to buy the stock, you can place what? You can place the market order, right? Or the limited order, right? Market order means you can buy the stock and the price available on the market directly, right? But for limit order, you want to set a price range you want to buy, right? For example, you want to specify the price you want to buy for the, you know, Walmart, right? Right? For example, I bought some shares of the Walmart, right? This morning, right? So adding more shares to my holding of the Walmart, right? For example, I bought the Walmart this morning at what? $127 per share, right? So that's the price I specified in the limit price, right? So if the Walmart price now we're going down to the 127, right? Now it's about 130, right? I can never 
you know, have my order accessed, right? Only if the price touch this level, right? My order will be your last, right? But for the market order, you will accept any price right, on the market, right? Whatever, you know, higher or cheaper, right? You will take the price immediately, right? Without any, you know, delay. Right? So if you want to buy the shares as soon as possible, the, the market order will be better. Right? But if you want to save the cost, right, you can wait and you don't you don't you know want to hold this stock as soon as possible, then you can use what you can use limit order. Right? You can use limit order. So we will not spend too much time on this part. Right? You can study this one with more details, right? In the investment course, right? We will do more discussion on the different orders, right? And di different investment you know, strategy, right, to reduce risk, right? And also we can do some simulation games, right, in the investment course, right? But for this course, we will focus on the stock valuations, right, valuations, use the dividend growth model, right? So dividend growth model, right, dividend growth model has another name called, called Gordon, right, model, right? Because the economist, right, design this model, Right. His last name is called uh, his name is called Gordon, right? So it's also called Gordon models. Right. So let's follow the bond and the stock chapters, right? We will do some simple, you know, valuations and also some questions on the concept. After we study, you know, these two chapters, right? And then we also study the others, right, from the cash flows. Right. So this cash flow for the stock and the bond. It's about the coupon, about the dividend, right? And we study some regular projects. Use what? Use the capital budgeting process, right? Capital budgeting process, right? And in the capital budgeting process, right? We use the Bennett Company as our examples, right? So Bennett Company, we have the cash flows, right? You know, side by side. Right, once the project A, once project B, right, for example, right, then you can use our capital budgeting techniques, right, to solve what? To solve the NPV, right, to solve IRR and the discount rate, right, to see which one is better, right? For example, NPV functions, right, you can use the Excel, right, or use our what? Formula, or use our what? Or use our financial calculator to solve it, right? Because now you take the test and the home, you can choose any way you want right, to solve the MPV. I know some, you know, website, they are offer, you know, some, you know, tools, you can solve the MPV directly, right? So if you have the access right, to this website, you are fine, right? you can use any website right, to solve the MPV, right? but input this data, right? Or you can use Excel, right? So any way you can solve the answer, right? You can do that. And also our test, like I mentioned, is the multiple choice question, right? So you can, you know, check the answer, right? To compare with your results, right? To see which one is correct. And right? so that's for the NPV calculations, right? NPV calculations is the most important calculations in this chapter, right? On the capital budgeting. So you need to make sure you can solve NPV. Right, for the questions we have, right, both in the homework and in the test, right, and how to use Excel, right, we mentioned this one in class before, right, you will use MPV functions, then, you know, put, input what, input the discount rate, right, discount rate, then drag the cash flows from one to five into a bracket, after you solve MPV, then you plus initial outflows, right, to solve the total that present value for this project. And then you can use the conditional leverage right, to compare right, which one has a higher NPV. So A project has more NPV than B. So we will choose the project A, right? So that's the NPV function in Excel. Also, you can do the same thing on what? On the financial calculators, right? So I will not, you know, explain this part, right? You, we already done this one, right? Many times in class, right? So first, you need to clear the work, right? Then you will start to do the cash flow, right? Into the CF key, right? So press the CF key. 
then you will put the initial out, out flows, right? Then you put the you know the foreign flows right? one by one right into the calculators, right? One thousand, eight hundred, right? Six hundred and two hundred. After you finish the input, right? You will go down to price NPV and enter the discount rate, right? To solve the net pricing value, right? So you can see here I put a language right for these com com commands right in detail. Right. And this is a display on your financial calculators. Right. So you can finally solve what NPV right, by press the CPT button. Right. And if you want to continue to solve IR, you don't need to erase all the memory of the ca um, cash flows. Right. Just continue to press IR button, then press CPT, you can solve what internal rate of what return. Right. So that's how to use financial calculators. Right. Basically, you can use the formula. Or use Excel or use financial calculator right, to solve these questions as you need. Right? Okay, so for IR, same thing, right? We will just you know use the cash flows we have, right? Then you know you either use the IR functions, right? Like you did in a project, or use Excel. Oh, sorry, I'll use use the financial calculator to solve it, right? So which project offer you more what more internal rate of return will be what will be the better, right? So you can see the A and B project. B give you a higher internal rate of return, right? So B is a better project, right? Based on IR criteria, right? And also, right in the uh, uh, videos right on the uh, um YouTube right I show you what I show you guys how to solve the clause rate right clause rate is the rate make the two project equivalent right so why the cost rate are important because not always right the NPV and IR will be consistent right sometimes NPV method will give you indication you will choose the A but IR well, opposite, I right, will ask you to choose the B. If they are not consistent, we can do something called cost over rate, right? How to solve the cost over rate? You will take our, you will take a difference of the cash flows, right? For every year, right? As a record in the third column, as called a difference cash flows. Then you solve the IRR for this differential cash flows, right? This is a clause word, cost rate, right? Cost rate. You may have a questions in the final right, for this class rate calculations. Right? So please take some notes for these questions. Right? You first take a difference between the two columns right, to solve the differential cash, cash flows. Then you solve the IRR, internal rate of return for this differential cash, uh, cash flows. It's called a class over rate. But you can say the class over rate is the rate making the two curve intersect. And so on the cost over rate, right, the two projects are equivalent, right? But smaller than the discount rate, right? Than cost over rate, right? So we will prefer to choose A project, right? And after this cost over rate, we will prefer B project, right? So that's why we call this one as our word, cost over rate, right? You can see the pattern of the cash flows, right? For the A cash flows, right, they have the even cash flow for every year. Right? But B cash flows has a bigger cash flow comes what comes earlier, right? So B can take the what bigger discount rate, right? So more than the cost over rate, right? The B is better than A. But for the A, A is better to take our what smaller, you know, discount rate, right? So you can see if the rate less than the cost over rate, A will be better than B. Okay, right? so you can see that's why the cost over rate is useful, right? Because it can tell you right, for different discount rate, right, which project is better right, for the NPV method. And then you can do this calculation of the cost over rate by yourself, right? And also we have the what? We have the IR method, right? And I think you already done this one in what in your project, right? You already, you know. Uh, mention these details by right? which method is better and what's the this, uh, advantage and what's the disadvantage right, for this method right, in your project. Right? So I will not 
specify this part in the detail, right? You can see the detail right on your textbook also, right? And then for this project, right? So we can use different method to compare this project, right? And also another choice is to use what? Profitability index, right? We have the NPV, IR method, and also we have the, you know, payback period, right? And the last one we mentioned in class is profitability index, right? Use the, you know, total discounted inflows, right? Divided by the, you know, the outflows on time zero is the PI index, right? So the PI index should be more than one, right? For you to take this project, means the inflows are more than what? Outflows, right? So that's the PI index, right? So you need to add in all the inflows as the top of the ratio, and the bottom is the sum of what? Inflows, right? So you need to uh, sum of outflows, right? The sum of inflows must be more than sum of outflows, right? For you to take this project, right? So the PI index must be what? More than one, right? So let me choose an example here. For example, for the B project, right? You can add in all these inflows up, right? For the future inflows, the total will be what? Five five nine two four four, right? The total outflows is four fifty thousand, right? The ratio is one point two four. So you can see that's why the PI index is more than one, right? Means the inflow more than outflows. You should take this one. You should take this project, right? So you can see to the for the project to be accepted, right? the PI must be what more than one, right? And let me check the chat, right? The Stephanie asked me, right? Um, I so I will not do the three uh, six thirty session today, but I will uh transfer the record right, of this video, right? And post on the YouTube, right? So you can basically review, right? This video, right? Again, right, for the evening class, and also, um, I will do a you know recitation with um. You know next week right so we can schedule a two meeting next time right so follow what follow questions in the homework right for the following chapters right and also uh you can see the video on what on youtube right for the following chapters right we will host you know problem solving sections every week right to solve the problems you have right um and then for the video of the project, right, it's already on the backboard, right? So you can see the um you can on the, you can see the YouTube video for the you know for the um project, right? And the chapter 10, chapter 11, um, you know, I'm wondering about that because you know if I post the lecture 10, chapter 11 notes will be too much for you to study. And so I don't want you to spend too much time for these two chapters because our project is already covered these two chapters. So most likely we will just study the question directly for these two chapters in today's class. So you don't need to review for chapter 10, chapter 11 anymore, right? So we will use this uh, lecture today as the chance to study the chapter 10, 11 questions for the test. So you don't need to uh, study the whole you know, lecture notes for chapter 10, chapter 11. Okay, so last one, right, for these capital budgeting technicals is the payback period, right? How to solve the payback period? You can add in the word cash flow to time zero's outflow one by one, right? To say out what year, right? Your initial cost will be what? Will be recovered, right? So we study this one in our project also, right? So you add in the cash flow incrementally, right, one by one to say on what year. Right, your initial costs are what are covered, right? For example, for the project B, right? And then you add in cash flow one by one, right? And then you found out, right? After two years, right? You, you say 28 plus 12 equal to the 40, right? So 40, 400,000, right? Cannot compensate what? For $50,000, I still have $50,000 left. Right? So you, you need to take 
more months in the third year right, to cover all these costs. Right? So remained balance 50,000, divided by 100,000 will be 0.5. Right? So in the middle of the two and the three years, right, you cover all the costs. So that's the 2.5 years, right? that's the payback period. Right? And you can see, we mentioned this one in our what in our uh, class and also on the what on on our project. Right, you need to describe the pros and the cons of the payback period. Right. So first, payback period is very easy to use. Right. But you know the payback period also has some very obvious cons. Right. Because they never consider the time value of the money. Right, every cash flows are adding together directly, right? And also after you cut by right, the project, use the payback period, you are not considering what can happen after payback period. And right? so this is the cause of the payback period. Right? You can see more details on our lecture notes and textbook. Right? So we do some we do some what? We do some modifications right, to this method right, to make this one. Right, consider the time value of money. Right, we call this one as what? Discounted payback period. Right, so what is discounted payback period? You will first discount all cash flow by right? using discounting factors to a time zero. Right, you can see that's the discounted cash flow. Then you will add in this cash flow, right, one by one, right, to see on what year, right, this cash flow will be paid back. And you can see here, right? After three years, right, we still have the balance seven one eight four right dollars left on your balance, right? So our total payment period will be the three years already passed, plus the remaining balance, right, over the PV of the fourth year's cash flow, right? So that's zero point seventy five, right? So the total will be three point seventy five years, and that's the payback period for the A project. Same for the B project, right? We also solve the discounted cash flow first. Then you add in this cash flow back incrementally one by one to see on what year right, the cash flow will be paid back. So we have a three plus $2,114 oh, $2, over 6830, right? You have the 3.3 .3 years right, for the B project discounted payback period. Right, and uh, uh, for the Samuel, for our uh, for our test, right, for our test, um, for our test, right. So you see, we have the multiple choice questions, right. So you can you can read the questions, right. If the question asks you to solve the regular payback period, right. So you don't need to you know solve the discounted cash flow. Just add in the cash flow directly, right, one by one to see what's the number for the payback period. But if you see the question, ask you to solve the discounted payback period, right? Then you must solve the discounted cash flow first. Then you add in cash flow later on, right? One by one to see on what year, right? All the time zeros outflows will be compensated. Right? So that's the discounted payback period, right? So you can see the calculations right, on this table with the details. Right? So I will not go to the calculations. I right? use Excel, right? but you can do this one. Right? Follow these um, details right here. So all this is about the capital budgeting technicals. Right? If you have done our project, right, and you should know this question well. Right? And uh, then for the question, chapter, uh, next two chapters, right? We actually try to what? Try to form the cash flow, right? To do the capital budgeting analysis, right? We try to form the ca cash flow to do the capital budgeting analysis, right? Based on the depreciation, right? For example, right? Based on the salvage values, right? Based on the initial capital spendings, right? So you can see here. Be careful, right? There are some concern about this chapter, right? About salvage values, right? What is salvage value? Salvage value is something left, right? On an account, right? You can sell, right? For this fixed asset, 
right? So we will mention this one in the detail, right? But before we go to a salvage values, right, should also pay attention to what change in the not working capitals, right? So you can see this is the cash flows on the time zero, right? It's the working capital. How to define the working capital? It's the current assets minus current liabilities, right? So what is current asset? The current assets including the cash, account receivables, and inventories, right? That's current assets, right? What is current liabilities, right? Including the account payables and expense. A curo, right? So you can see our current assets minus current liabilities will be the change in what not working capitals, right? So the difference will be what not working capitals, right? So let me show you some examples. Uh, so our project, right, actually have the what three part. The first part is to calculate. The cash flow on the time zero, right, called our uh, initial investment, right. So, for example, right, what's the net working capital you incur, right, for the time zero, and what's the spending, right, to buy the new machine, right, and also, right, you have the you know some installation cost and the delivery cost, right. All this is the cash flow on what on time zero called initial investment, right. So, initial investment actually have what three part the first part is what is the cost of the new machine right then we need to solve the what the process from the sale of old machine right the difference will be the money spent on the purchase of what new machine right then plus the change in the net working capital right it's called a initial investment right initial investment right so that's uh, no such Required calculations, right? Doing the uh, exams, right? Doing the exams, our questions will be focused on what? On a calculation of what? Operating cash flows, right? So let me show these questions, right? In our test, right? In our test, we will focus on what? Solving of the operating cash flows, right? So let's show some questions. For example, here, right? That's a question from our homework, right? And also these questions. You can see some similar questions in our test, right? To solve what? Operating cash flows. So you can see in the notes, I already mentioned the terms zero cash flow is called uh, initial investment, right? And from the time one to the time t, right? When you finish the project, right? This middle process, right? We always focus on what? Operating cash flows, right? For example, this company called Mont Blanc, right? Mont Blanc, live stock, right? Pennsylvania, right? Incorporation has project a uh, sales volumes of what? One six fifty, right? For the second year of our proposed expansion project, actually the time. Uh, first year, right, is initial investment, right? So we were focused on the uh, continuous years for operating cash flows, right? The cost normally run 60% of the sales, or about 990, right, in this case. The depreciation expense will be $100, right? The tax rate is 65%. What is the operating cash flows, right? So that's our most important calculations by right, for these two chapters by right, to solve what operating cash flows right so before you you know solve operating cash flows we can use our what performer income statement right to show what's the detail for this income statement right so first one is what the sales right is the sixteen fifty dollars right that's the sales right what's the cost all you can see what's the cost of goods sold, right? Cost of the sales, right? Is the sixty percent of the sales, right? So you can see this one times sixty percent will be the cost. It's already solved, right? It's nine ninety dollars, right? So our you know gross profit, right, will be the sales minus cost, right? And also you can see we have the non-cash expense is the what. 
depreciation, my depreciation. So our depreciation is what? It's the 100, right? So our depreciation, depreciation, right? It's $100, right? So our operating profit or EBIT, uh, EBIT is earnings before the interest and tax, right? That's the, you know, the sales minus cost minus depreciation, right? Equal to what? So 1650 minus 990 minus 100, right? So that's a 650, right? Minus 1090, right? So we have a 16 and what? Five sixty. Five sixty dollars Good. Very good, right? So that's the earnings before the interest and tax. So, uh, very thank you, right? So help me to solve it, right? Five sixty. So that's the EBIT. EBIT, right? You should pay what? You should pay the interest and then what? Tax, right? But here has no what? No interest expense, right? So we will just what? Minus the tax, right? So what is the tax? Tax is what? Thirty five percent of what? EBIT. Right, so you can use the 35% to times our EBIT to solve the tax. Right, so you use the 560 right, times 0 0.35 right, equal to the 196. 196, right? So the difference will be what? Will be 4 and 6 and 3, right? 364 dollars as what? Earnings before the interest. Um, uh, any after interest and tax, right? So this one is what? It's a net income, right? So our net income is the $364, right? So our net income by taking all the expense out, by taking the cost for the manufacturing, depreciation, and, uh, you know, the tax, right? We have a net income equal to a $364, right? But our question is not solve the net income, right? We need to solve what? We need to solve the operating cash flows, right? And operating cash flows formula, we actually emphasize many times, right, in our project, right? Operating cash flows equal to what? Net income plus what? Plus depreciation, right? So we need to add in the depreciation back to solve the operating cash flow. So this is a non-cash expense. Right, so we have the three thirty four plus depreciation. Right, that's the one hundred dollars. Right, so that's equal to what? That's equal to the four thirty four dollars. Right, that's the formula we applied in our project. Right, so it's the net income plus what? Plus depreciation. Right, and actually this one has a different method if you want. Right, there are different methods. You can use the net income plus depreciation to solve the what? Operating cash flow. And this method called, called a bottom up method for operating cash flow. And so we started from the net income from the very bottom of the income statement. And we add in depreciation back to solve what? Operating cash flow, right? That's called a bottom up method, right? We also have the top down method that use the sales minus cost by right, minus tax or you can use the tax shield method right so please don't use these two methods right, in, in the test so we will prefer to use our what bottom up method by right, using net income plus what depreciation right so you can use this method right for our what for our calculations right in the test right to solve the operating cash flow Uh, how many questions in the final, oh, sorry, in the midterm, right? There are 20, uh, 25 questions in the midterm, right? Midterm two, right? 25 multiple choice, right? Multiple choice, right? Questions for the midterm, right? So you have the three hours to do the test, right? So uh, please do the test, right? When you have the time, you know, three hours right, available, right? Once you open the test, come on to finish the test, in one setting, right? So please make sure you have the three hour, you know, right, to do this test, right? But I think you can, if you 
uh, you know, study this chapter well, right? Most students can finish the test within, you know, uh, one, one, one hour, like one and a half hour, right? So please use your time efficiently. The project for this capital budgeting project will be due before the May 1st, right? Before the May 1st. So please finish the project before the May 1st, right? So you have the more one, uh, one more week, right, to do the project, right? One more week to do the project. So next one, we will solve the something called call break even, right? So what is break even? Break even means there's no gain, no loss, right? So what is accounting break even, right? For accounting break even means what? Means the net income, right? Net income equal to what? Equal to zero, right? What that means? Means, you know, you generate no gain, no loss on the net income, right? So your accounting statement are what are break even, right? Let me show one example for that, right? So for example here, right? A new product requires an initial investment, $5 million, right? So this is initial investment on time zero, right? You spend $5 million, right? As initial investment. The bracket means uh, outflows, right? And uh, you see, we will depreciate to an expected service value toward zero, right? For the next five years. And the price of the new product is expected to what? To $25,000, right? And variable, uh, the variable cost, right? For the per unit, right? It's $15,000, right? The fixed cost is one million. What is the break even point, right? So please don't memorize the formula, right? We can explain this one in the detail, right? So what's the what's the profit, right? What's the net income, right? You can do the calculations, right? Net income is the sales minus what? Minus the cost, right? So the cost, including what? Including the variable cost. By right, including variable cost, and also including what? Including the fixed cost, right? And then uh, you can see here, the sales is what? The sales is the price of the product, right? Times what? Times the quantities, right? This is the price, and right? So the price times quantity is the sales, right? So $25,000, that's the price, right? Times the quantities, will be the sales, right? Sales minus the cost. Where's the cost? We have the fixed cost, one million, right? One million is what? One thousand, thousand, right? Six zeros is a million, right? That's the fixed cost. And also we have what? We have the variable cost, right? Variable cost is, is the price, is the cost per unit, right? Times what? times the how many quantities you produce, right? Variable cost will increase with the how many units you produced, right? Line minus what? Minus depreciation, right? Depreciation is what? Depreciation is the uh, total is the $5 million as what? Depreciation, right? And uh, you see our depreciation will be go to zero after five years, right? And so what's the average depreciation will be Five over five will be what? One million. Right. So our sales sales minus the cost minus depreciation will be what? Will be zero. Right. That's our accounting break even. Right. To solve these equations, you can get how many quantities by right, for this accounting break even point. Right. So we can do these calculations together. Right. So 25,000 Q minus 15,000 Q, right? Equal to what? 10,000 Q, right? That's the 10,000 Q. Then we have the 1 million, right? Minus what? Uh, 1 million, sorry. Plus 1 million, right? Equal to what? 2 million. And right? so the Q equal to what? 200, right? 200. 
right? So you're moving the numbers to the right, right? And uh, combine the terms with the Q on the left-hand side, and right? you have the 10,000 Q equal to the 2 million, right? So take our division, right? The Q will equal to the 200 what? Units, right, units. And you can also use the formula if you want, right? Don't use our definitions, right? But definitions is easy to handle, right? But for the formula, you want to memorize, right? Everything here, right? So for example, sales minus the variable cost and total cost, right? This is total cost, right? Including the variable cost plus fixed cost, right? Then minus what? Depreciation, right? And we have no tax rate here, right? But you see, if we want to make this equation to zero, right? This part will be equal to zero. And that's why we have the calculations, right? We just finish right in the last slide, right? To solve the quantities, right? So you can solve this one, either use our definitions, right? Or you can use our formula here, right? Fixed cost plus depreciation over price minus average variable cost will be the Quantities for accounting break even. Right? So you can see that's the formula, right? Or you can use our you know definitions to build these equations, right? To solve these quantities. And right? so that's the questions for accounting break even point. Now let's say some other topics, right, for these two chapters. Okay, so for these two chapters, right, we do a project, right, together, right, use our Zoom, right, last time, and then we study this project, right, and then we solve the salvage value, and then we solve the time zeros, initial investment, then we, based on this cash flow, right, we solve the NPV, for example, right, this is another, you know, examples, right, and be careful, in these examples, right, we have a special word, depreciation method, right? For these questions, our depreciation is not our, it's not a straight line, be careful. We use what? M-A-C-R-S, right? M-A-C-R-S method, right? You know our depreciation has a two way, right? One way is called our, what? Straight line. Right, so you have the you know total depreciation, right? Divided by how many years? It right? will be the average depreciation, right? Per year, this is called a straight line method, right? Another way for depreciation is called what? M A C R S, right? Means we have the modified, accelerated, right? Depreciation, right? So your depreciation will be not take our average anymore. But based on what? Based on the MACRS what tables, right? So your depreciation in total, right, times the proportion for every year, here, right, will be a depreciation amount for what? For different years, right? So let's say how to solve MACRS depreciation, right? You can see the detail here, and for this. Um, questions for these examples, right? We have the what? We have the sales price, right? And uh, tax. And we can solve what? We can solve the salvage value, right? On the what? On time four, right? It's the price you can sell for this fixed asset minus the tax you should pay, right? Then you have what? Salvage value after tax. I for this fixed asset. But our focus will be what? Will be on the depreciation, right? How to solve the depreciation. I saw how to solve depreciation. Right? Let me show this one here. You can see the formula, right? Will be the cost of the fixed asset, right? That's the total depreciation amount right? for these four years, right? This equipment, will be used for what? For the four years, right? So this value for this fixed asset is the total what? Total depreciation amount, right? Total depreciation, right? And this depreciation will be allocated in what? In the four years. 
right? So you use this total depreciation times the depreciation percentage, right? For each year, you solve what you solve the depreciation amount, right? For the different years. Right. So let's say the calculations, right? For example, the first year's depreciation, right, should be the three point five million dollars, right? Times what? Times thirty three point thirty three percent. And so the first year's depreciation will be the three point five million dollars, right? Times the percentage of the depreciation for the first year, thirty three point thirty three percent. Right, and uh, for the next year, right, for next year, second year, right, you see depreciation will be different, right, will be still the total depreciation, 3.5 million, but the proportion will be different, right, will be 44.45%. Right, the third year, right, the number will be also different, will be times what? 14.81 percent, right? The fourth year, well, times what? Times 7.41 percent. You can say our fixed assets are depreciated much more in the first two years compared with the last two years, right? So that's why we call this method as R what? Modified, accelerated, right? Depreciation method, right? Because we have the more depreciation at the beginning less depreciation afterward, right? So that's how you solve depreciation in this row, right? Based on this given percentage, right? So there's one question in our test, right? Middle term two, right? You need to solve the MACR as depreciation, right? So that's nothing, you know, you need to do some innovations, right? You just follow this given percentage, right? To solve a depreciation every year, right? And uh, if you minus all this depreciation out from the original cost, it will be remain the value right, for this one, for this fixed asset, right? You can see here, right? After you minus all this depreciation out, right? Remain will be what? Will be the book value left right, for what for this equipment all these fixed asset right for this equipment right our initial cost of the equipment right minus total accumulated uh accumulated depreciation right, accumulated depreciation, right? What left on the book, right? Like called book value for this equipment, right? Now our salvage value after tax, compared with these book values, right? You will determine right, how much tax you need to pay, right? For these, what, for these transactions, right? Right, if you sell the, if you sell the, you know, equipment after four years, right? Less than these book values, you will pay no tax, right? If you sell the equipment after four years, less than book values after on the you know financial statements, you will pay no tax. If you pay, if you can sell this equipment more than the values on the book, right? You will pay what you will pay the tax, right? So that's the that's what we studied in the previous project, right? And then you may ask me, right? If you have the value of the equipment, right? Even less than book value, what happened? So you incur a what? A loss, right? So this loss can reduce, right? The tax on what? On corporation income, what? Income statement, right? So you can say if you incur a loss, not a gain, right? You will not pay any tax, right? But your loss can, you know, reduce your tax on your income statement, right? Income statement, right? And also we can use this table as a chance to review our calculations, right, in the project, right? 
in the project, we have the you know operating cash flows by right, using net income plus depreciation. Same thing for this one, for this project, these questions, right? Also net income plus depreciation, right? Equal to what? Operating what? Cash flows, right? So once you finish the net income, right? You are adding what? You are adding depreciation, right? So you can say our net income here, right? Plus depreciation. Will be what? Will be the operating cash flows, right? So we adding the net income plus the depreciation will be the operating cash flows. Right? That's very important. You can say there are questions both in this midterm test and in the final. We need to solve what? We need to solve the operating cash flows, right? We need to solve operating cash flows. And how to solve the net income, right? Net income equal to what? Equal to the revenue minus the total cost, right? Including the fixed cost and the variable cost, right? It's the total cost, right? Revenue minus total cost, right? That minus what? Non-cash expense, right? Both fixed cost and the variable cost are what? Cash cost, right? Cash cost, right? And then we also need to minus what? non-cash expense as the depreciation right so revenue minus the total cost right including both cash and non-cash expense right we have what we have the ebit right earnings before interest and tax right now we need to pay the in uh, pay the interest and pay the tax right we have what we have the net income right for many you know manufacturing firm they don't have the long-term debt, for example, so they don't pay the interest, right? but they will pay the tax directly. So after you have the net income plus the depreciation, we have the operating cash flow. And so this operating cash flow is our, you know, cash flow for our capital budgeting what? analysis, right? For example, what is the initial investment, including, the, you know, capital spending, Right, for this what for this fixed asset right, for this equipment right and also for the spending on the land for these questions right and also you can choose what that working capitals right so all this will be what will be the initial investment right and then you can see our operating cash flows in the middle right land for the ending of this project Right, you need to also adding some cash flow to our what operating cash flows to solve, right? Including what? Including the release of what? Release of the working capitals, right? Release of working capitals here, right? You release this working capital, right? And also you can you can what? You can sell your equipment, right? after the tax right it's called after tax salvage value right and also you now can release the land right land values can be different right you know the property and right? the real estate right? well, the values is different right so you can see the land the property values right even higher is 2.4 million dollars right for example you know the manhattan right the price of the property right is increasing right with the year right so you can see the property price here right it's increasing so all these cash flows are released are either released or you sell you know this equipment right you got this three cash flow adding back to our operating cash flows we have what you have the time force cash flow so now you put these cash flows on the same line you can do what you can do the calculations of what npv irr right pay by period Right. So let me show the calculations here again. Right. This is very similar to your what? To your project. Right. So here just second times, right? We do the similar questions. Right. You can see our discount rate, right, in the questions is what? 13%. Right. This is our required of return for this project. This is our cost of capital. Right. It's also called what? Called discount rate. Right. Discount rate. So this is our discount rate, right? 13%, right, 13%. So 
So we can now review our calculation again, right, for this calculation, right? So NPV, right? NPV functions, right? And then we have a 13% as discount rate, right? Then you choose what? Then you choose these cash flows, right? From one to four, right, into a bracket. Then plus initial outlays, right, outflows, right? So you have the one, 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 zero, zero, three, right, six, eighty two, right? Point three two dollars, right? So that's the MPV calculations, right? And we also can solve what? We can solve the IRR. IR, you can directly put these cash flows uh, into the bracket. And you have the 20%, right? And you can add in more decimals if you want, right? 19.78%. And we can also solve what? We can solve the payback period, right? How to solve payback period? Now it's our time to review right, these calculations, right? So let's see how to solve the payback period. We were adding our cash flows right, to initial cost one by one, right, to see how much year, right, this cost will be what will be covered, right? So first, let's add in what? Let's add in this one, right? You can see we still have the number in the bracket, right, so still negative, right? And we're adding more. We're adding second year's cash flow. Still negative, right? So we're adding one more. This one plus this one still negative, right? but the numbers is much smaller. Right? And this number is less than what, less than this one, right? So you will take a proportion of the fourth year right, to cover this remaining cost, right? So what's the proportion, right? Will be this one left, right? Divide by what? Divide by the total cash flows on the fourth year, right? So the proportion will be, you know, 0 0.069. Right, so we have a total payback period will be the how many years already passed? One, two, three, three years, right? Three years plus the proportion. Right? So three point what zero seven years. Right, you can reduce the decimals by three point zero seven years. Right. So this is the NPV. Right? This NPV, right? This is the IRR. Right? And this is the payback what? Payback period. Right? And then we can solve the other indicators, right? For example, like we mentioned before, right? The payback period, not concerned about what? Not concerned about time value of money. We can modify this one to solve what? To solve the discounted right? payback period. Right? How to solve a discounted payback period? Maybe it's a challenge for us, right? So let me show this one here. So let me insert some what columns, right, to help us to build our what to build our discounting factors, right? So what's discounting factors? It's one plus r raised to what raised to a t, right? T is from the zero, one, two, three, and four, right? So let's adding the time here, right? So. Let me add in a time, you know, sequence, right? So let me put this one above. And this is for the, this, um, this is for the period, period calculations, right? So here I adding a time, T, right? T, T is from the zero, right? And this time one, right? This is time two, right? This time three, this time what? Time four, right? So now let's build our discounting what factors. So we have what? We have the 13% discount rate, right? We just mentioned. So one plus 13%, right? Raised to the power T, right? So we have the one and the others, right? So let's change this one to regular numbers, right? So you can see that's our discounting factor for a different year. Right, we just solved is one plus r is to the time t, right? Then our discounted right cash flows DCF right will be our original cash flows divided by what 
divided by our discounting vectors, right? So we can solve the DCF here, right? That's our discounted cash flows, right? Now we can solve what? Now we can solve the discounted what? Pay by period, right? Use the same method we solve the regular pay by period, right? Let's do this one here. So we were adding the cash flow one by one, right, to see on what year, right, this initial cost will be recovered, right? So first, let's adding this one to our first year's cash flow, right, still negative, right? And then, then adding one more, right? And then, then adding more. So you can see we still have the 15, right? 1.5 million dollars left, right? So, but this number is, is less than what? Less than the fourth year discounted cash flow, right? So what's the proportion will be what you have remained on the balance divided by the total cash flow, right? On what? On the last year, right? So the proportion will be what? Will be, let me, change this number to the decimal will be 0 0.60, right? 3252012, right? So that's our discounted pay by period. Hmm? You can put the three plus this one, right, to put the number here, right? And also you can solve what? PI index, right? Probability what? Index, right? Probability index is the sum of what future inflows, right? Then divided by what? Divided by the initial outflows, right? Mm. The future inflows that right, is here, it's this one, right? Divided by the initial outflows. So we all use what discounted cash flows, right? We solve the PI index, right? And this one should take what absolute values, right? Because the ratio is positive. Right? So that's our PI index, right? You can see here, right? The PI index is the sum of all the what future inflows, right? Divided by what? Do by the initial outflows, and right? so you add in these four cash flows up, right? You add these four cash flows up, and right? that's the top on the ratio. Do by the initial outflows, right? It's the PI what PI indicator, right? Probability index, right? And this one's what is more than one, right? And our NPV is what is more than zero, right? IR is more than the cost of capital, right? So both, uh, all these three indicators, right? Means you should accept this project, right? Maybe the pay by period is a little bit of problems, right? Because more than what, more than three years, right? But all the others indicate that this is a good project, right? So that's for the um, questions on these two chapters, right? So most likely in our test, we will solve what? We will solve operating cash flows, right? And also, right, some questions ask you to solve what? To solve, for example, what's the net working capitals, right? And what's the uh, depreciation right, for MACRS method, right? So all these calculations will be useful, right, for these two chapters, right? Please take some notes for this part. And for MACRs, as depreciation, right, you will use this one, use these tables. Right? So these tables very what? Very important, right? It's, it's given in the questions, right? You don't need to memorize this one, but you need to know how to solve what? The different years depreciation, I right? use the total cost of the fixed asset, right? Times by what? Times by the percentage of what? Depreciation for MACRS method, right? So as for the um, 
you know, this project we have done right, before, but now I change it change to a different depreciation method, right? So we can see how can we handle this question again, right? But let me also show one more problems, right? We didn't cover yet right, in uh, our previous lectures, right? Uh, I will upload this file right, to the Blackboard right, tonight. Right? So these are new documents I just create. Right? So I will upload this new Excel sheet right, to Blackboard. Right? Okay, so this is another question I just create right, today. So you know for our um, chapter 10, chapter, um, chapter 11, chapter 12, right? we have studied uh, you know, the cash flow analysis. Right? And at the end of the last lectures, I mentioned something forward for the uh, sensitivity analysis, right? You know the economics can be good, can be, you know, can be poor, or can be outperformed, right? So you need to do the different scenario analysis, right? Different scenario, right? right? So you can have a base case, or a lower case, or an upper case. What's the base case? Base case means the regular operations, right? So you just follow this regular basis, you know, to solve what that income, right? So the sales minus variable cost minus the uh, fixed cost minus depreciation is EBIT, right? EBIT times one minus T, right? Will be what? Will be the net income, or you can say EBIT minus tax amount right, will be the net income. Right? So that's uh, basically you know the net income calculations. But you can also make a different assumptions. For example, in the different assumptions, right, you predicting right your companies were running in a what in a poor case. In a poor case means you you know has a poor sales. If you have a poor performance, you actually, you know, sell selling what selling less. Right? For example, now it's our COVID nineteen right? pandemic. Right? So many restaurants are closed, right? and also the company manufacturing firms close their what close their business, and so they have what much less what much less productions. Right? In such case, right, they will make a what low case analysis. Right? For low case, everything will be what will be worse. For example, right, the sales will be lower, right? Accordingly, the variable cost will be lower, right? Because the variable cost is based on the what productions, right? But the fixed cost will be still the same, right? Depreciation will be still the same. As you can see, our EBIT is reduced, right, to the twenty thousand dollars, right, compared with our base case, right, and also. The tax rate is still the same, right? so you have the less tax, right? But our net income will be much less than what our base case, right? That's for the lower case analysis, right? And we also can have what uh, upper case analysis. Upper case means everything is what better. That right? means the operations of the business is really, really well done, right? So you can see the sales is producing with a higher unions, right? Higher unions. And also, the variable cost is increased with what productions, right? but we have the same fixed cost and fixed depreciation. Right? You can see our EBIT and net income are, are what are better than our what base case. Right? So here, this one called what called scenario analysis. Right? So I don't need you to do the you know detailed discussion for this part, but I want you to know this concept. Right? This called a uh, Scenario analysis for the robust, for robust track. Okay. So while your company is in a worst situation, can you still generate a what? A positive net present values. Right? That's our goal right? to the what? To the robust test. Right? Seems like for this company, right? in the worst case, they will incur a what? Negative, right? MPV, right? So for example, right, for most companies are doing very well right, in the regular days, right, but in this year, right, especially during the March, right, 
and uh, most business are shut down. And so, for example, you know the Neiman Marcus, right, fell upon the bankruptcy, and also Nordstrom, right. So this department store right, has less and less sales, right, and uh, you know in the worst case they cannot survive, right. And also the other company, right, like the Group Pump, also has a uh, big problems right now, right. Because the Group Pump, most people go to Group Pump is better coupon forward for restaurants, right. But you know. For most restaurants now it's shut down, right? So Google Pan is not popular anymore, right? But for the other business, right? For example, like Amazon, right? And the Walmart, right? During this situation, still still running well because what? Because the people need to buy the grocery, right? Online, right? So this is for the worst case, right? So there are questions in the test. To ask you to solve what to solve the worst case that income. So everything you should pick up is what is the worst case number. Right? For example, right, the sales should be what should be less, right? So you will choose the less sales amount. And also, right, the variable cost will be adjusted accordingly. Right, based on the how many units you produce, right? But the fixed, uh, fixed cost and the depreciation should be still the same. Right? So there's a calculations. I found this um, very similar case right, in our test, right? So please choose the relevant numbers right, to do these calculations. Right? Don't choose the upper case, right? don't choose the base case. Look at the questions, right? what do you want to solve? Then right? you choose the number accordingly, right? For example, we can see the in the worst case, maybe the sales right reduced by what twenty percent. Right? For example, land revenue right should be also what be also reduced by what by the twenty percent right? because your production is reduced by twenty percent. Right? Same thing for the variable cost also will be reduced by twenty percent. Right? But the fixed cost will be still the same. Right? Our depreciation will be still the same. Right, so this will be help help you to solve what EBIT by right, earnings before interest and tax. Right, this is a new EBIT. Right, the new EBIT times one minus the tax rate right, will be what will be the net income. Right, you can say most likely you will adjust what you will adjust the revenues and variable costs based on the less production level. Right. But for the fixed costs and depreciations, they are usually the same, right? But you should read the questions with more details, right? So that's for the, uh, you know, different case. So, um, you should do the different word, different analysis, right? Different analysis. So I will not go to detail, but you can see the questions in our test, right? So that's for the chapter 11 and chapter 12, right? For the capital budgeting, right? We study a different cash analysis. Right. So let me share your screen here. So you can see we finished the uh, review for these two chapters, right? So now let me summarize all the chapters by right, for the test again, right? For the second midterm test, right? We have the chapter after first test, right? So including the chapter on what? On the bond, on the stock. Right? And the capital budgeting analysis, right? And also the cash flow, right? Forward for capital budgeting analysis, right? So basically, we have the one, two, three, four, four topics, right? But this one, including what? Including the two chapters, right? And this one you can get from our from our project, right? Also from the questions we just did right in today's class. And these other chapters we have the independent word homework, right? You can use the homework as our word, as our review. Right? Only these two chapters, right? We use our project as our word. 
as our examples, right? And also today's calculations will be also useful, right? And including the what? Including the operating cash flows and also depreciation calculations. Right? Well, capital budgeting analysis, right? You have a different measurement, right? You have a net income, right? Oh, sorry, net present value. And, uh, you know, payback period. Right? And uh, internal rate of return. Right? PI index, index right? All these measurements. Right. And for stock, we have the DGN models, dividend growth model. Right. And for the bond, we have what? We have the bond valuations, right. especially yield to maturity. Right. It's a discount rate. Right. And the coupon rate is interest payment amount. Right. So that's the major topics for this test. Right. So basically, including what? Five chapters and these topics will be still used in what in the final exam right? so when you prepare for this test you also prepared right, something for the final exam my right? final exam will be also testing you know this part this part especially these three chapters right the bond stock and capital budgeting will be also available in the final test Can you please repeat that to the top next to the bond? Okay, uh, next to the bond is the bond valuations, right? Bond valuation, bond pricing, right? Bond pricing. So you should have the what? Yield to maturities and the word coupon, right? Yield to maturities are discount rate, right? Coupons are interest what? Payment for the bond, right? And also for the bond, we have the different rules, right? Different rules, right? You should pay attention for that. Right, while the yield to maturity, right, more than the coupon rate, right, bond will trading with our what, with a discount. That means the bond, right, the price is less than what, than one thousand dollars, right. And if the yield to maturity, right, less than the coupon rate, right, bond will trading with our what, a premium. Right. So means the bond price is more than what? More than thousand dollars. Right. If the bond trading with a uh, yield to maturity happen to the coupon, happen to be the coupon rate, right? Then the bond price will be equal to what? One thousand dollars. Right. So will be what? Will be exactly equal to thousand. Right. Will be equal to what? Equal to the face value. And that's the rules we summarized in class. Right. Because this is the cost of what? Cost of the bond investment, right? This is their reward, right? So your cost more than reward, right? You should offer a what discount, right? And also the others will be the similar, right? If you have the cost less than reward, right? You should charge with a what? Charge with a premium, right? So that's the three rules we study in class. And also we have the some paths we show in class right on the chart right for the bond price there are some curve you must know right so if a bond trading with a premium right the price first will be more than thousand right but with the time passed right the price will going what going down right until what until thousand dollars right and also if a bond trading with a discount, right? So the price at beginning, right, is trading, you know, like the 900 or 980, right? So less than 1,000. But with the time passed, right, the price will moving up until what? $1,000 and what? And the maturity, right? If the yield to maturity equal to the coupon rate, then the bond will trading with what? $1,000, right, for any time, right? On a you know on different time of the bond, right? They will always trade with what one thousand dollars, right? So that's the three paths of the bond, right? For a different bond price movement, right? You have the three paths, right? Based on the premium trading, on the discounted trading, on the 
price just equal to the face value. You can say it will finally what converge to what one thousand dollars and what and maturity and maturity. Right, so that's the movement of the bond price. Okay, so that's for the bond price movement, right? So you should pay attention to these paths, right? So if you offer a uh, what discounted path uh, bond, right? So the price will move moving up right until what one thousand dollars, right? And also we have this graph. Right, once the yield to maturity, once the bond what price, right? If you have a higher yield to maturity, right, the price will be what will be inverse, right? Because yield to maturity is our discount rate, right? Discount rate for the bond price, right? 